What is the secret to smooth and efficient governance? It's a question that every country, frankly, grapples with. In America, the White House is fighting the Supreme Court. In Turkey, the government is fighting the Central Bank. In Sri Lanka, the parliament is fighting the president. Do you see the problem here? Governments work based on division of labor. Every organ has a very specific function. They must not exceed that. Because if they do, the equilibrium is disturbed. The lines of authority became, become blurred. India is grappling with one such question. And we'll get to that in a bit. But first, some background. Last week, former BJP spokesperson Nupur Sharma approached the Supreme Court. Everyone knows her story by now. She's the same spokesperson who insulted Prophet Muhammad. Today, she faces charges all over the country. In Delhi, in West Bengal, in Mumbai, cases have been filed in multiple states. Nupur Sharma wanted to club them together. She also wanted, she wanted in fact, all the cases to be transferred to Delhi. The reason, according to her lawyers, is safety. So the matter landed in the apex court of India. It was a yes or no question. The choice was clear, either accept her plea or reject it. As it turned out, the court opted for the second choice. They rejected the plea. But it's not the judgment that made headlines. It's what happened before the judgment. The two justices made some scathing observations about this case. And scathing, we say, is an understatement. Listen to what they said, and I'm quoting. She has threat or she has become a security threat. The way she has ignited emotions across the country, this lady is single-handedly responsible for what is happening in the country. The judge was talking about the beheading incident in Udaipur. He blamed Nupur Sharma for this attack. He also asked her to apologize on national television. But guess what? None of this is part of the final judgment. These were all observations, sort of like a lecture from the Supreme Court. They pulled up Nupur Sharma. The question is, how was it related to her appeal? This particular plea had nothing to do with her remarks. It was a request to transfer her cases to Delhi. That's all a simple yes or no decision. Instead, the court went on a monologue. And now some retired public servants have openly criticized this. 15 former judges, 77 former bureaucrats and 25 veterans have written an open letter to the Chief Justice of India. I have a copy. This is what the letter says. The unfortunate and unprecedented comments emanating from the two-judge bench has sent shockwaves in the country and outside. By no stretch, these observations, which are not part of the judicial order, can be sanctified on the plank of judicial propriety and fairness. Clearly, nobody is holding back. And just to be clear, this is not about whether Nupur Sharma is right. What she said was unacceptable. This is about whether the court overstepped its duty. That's what this open letter talks about. Let me quote again. The observations that have no connect jurisprudentially with the issue raised in the petition transgressed in an unprecedented manner all canons of dispensation of justice. In simpler words, the observations had nothing to do with the case. And this may seem like a one-off incident, but it reflects a larger tussle inside our system, a tussle to set the boundaries of power. Let me give you another example. Last week, India's Chief Justice was speaking at an event in San Francisco. And listen closely to what he said. This is the Chief Justice of India. The party in power believes that every governmental action is entitled to judicial endorsement, while the opposition parties expect the judiciary to advance their political positions and causes. He's right. But what's new about it? Every government expects the courts to endorse its view. Whether it's in India or the US or Bangladesh or South Africa, every opposition wants the opposite. The judiciary's job is to ignore both. Their verdicts must be based on hard facts and the law, not emotions, not public sentiments, and certainly not social media hysteria. So what do you think happened in this case? Did the court get carried away? According to the open letter, yes, they did. The observations did overstep legal boundaries, they say. Having said that, this is not an argument against judicial activism. Courts have done excellent work to protect citizens, whether it's on privacy or gender rights or religious rights. The Supreme Court has repeatedly upheld our rights. But at what point does it violate the division of power? After all, the court's job is to end controversial conversations, not to join them. And this is especially important in these times. 
We have Supreme Court stripping women of reproductive rights in America. We have judges extraditing whistleblowers in the UK. Citizens are not big fans of judiciary at the moment anywhere in the world. But then again, judges are not appointed to make fans. They're appointed to uphold the law. Vion is now available in your country. Download the app now and get all the news on the move.